ಸುತ್ತ ನೆಲ ನುಡಿ ಪಡೆದ ಕನ್ನಡಿಗರು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಚುವಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ತ್ ಕಾರ್ಪೆಟ್ ಕಾನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಐ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಐ ಐ ಟಿ ವಿಜನರಿ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಬಕುಲ್ ಪರೀಕ್ ಸರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆಕ್ರೆಟರಿ ಕನ್ನಡ ಕುಮಾರ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಬಸವರಾಜ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಶಾಂತತೆಯ ಹಾಗೂ ಸೌಜನ್ಯದ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ನಮಗೆಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಬೆನ್ನಲುಗಾಗಿ ನಿಂತು ಪ್ರಥಮ ಸಲ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಅವಕಾಶ ಕಲ್ಪಿಸಿ ಮುನ್ನುಡಿ ಬರೆದ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶಾಂತರಾಜ್ ಹಾಗೂ ಡೈನಾಮಿಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮರ್ಕ್ಯೂರಿಯಲ್ ಸೆಕ್ರೆಟರಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಟೇಶ್ ಹಾಗೂ ಎಲ್ಲ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಆಫೀಸ್ ಬಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಐ ಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೆಗಾ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿಕ್ ಈವೆಂಟ್ ನಾವು ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಕಮಿಟಿ ಟು ಬಿಗಿನ್ ದಟ್ ಟು ಡೇಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಡಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಐ ನಾವ್ ವಿ ನಾವ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಟುಡೇ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಸ್ ಜಿ ದೇಸಾಯಿ ಒರೇಷನ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡೆಲಿವರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ನನ್ ಅದರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಹೈಲಿ ಪ್ರೊಫಿಷಿಯಂಟ್ ಹೈಲಿ ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಡ್ಮಾಯರ್ಡ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿ ಫೆಸಿಟೆಡ್ ಒರೇಟರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಗದೀಶ್ ಚಿನ್ನಪ್ಪ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಡಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಐ ಕಾಲ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದ ಚೇರ್ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶಾಂತರಾಜ್ who is the president of iip karnataka 2020 he was the past president of iip id karnataka chapter in 2019 and past president of iip bangalore in 2015 i also call upon our next chairperson dr natesh bh to chair this session he is the secretary iip karnataka 2020 and past president iip bangalore I now call upon our guest of honor Dr Mrs NS Mahan Shetty Madam is the daughter of Dr SG Desai She is the principal and professor of pediatrics at Kehrs JN Medical College Belagavi with a teaching experience of more than 32 years with many publications and awards to her name Welcome ma'am over to the chairperson Shall I share the screen, Dr. Shantraj? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Welcome to all the delegates. And uh, thank you, Dr. Raj, Rajan, the delegate, today's organizing chairperson, and Dr. Ramita Pai, for your nice words. I welcome all the delegates once again for this wonderful uh, first virtual conference of the almighty for giving me an opportunity to tell a few words about a great person dr sg desai sir a legend in pediatrics known for his uh, punctuality and in depth knowledge in pediatrics and various other fields also so he is to leave something about him a teacher is one of those kind and some great teachers work in the footprints with their colossal strides in different spheres every individual has in him a living spirit that never ceases to illuminate and uh, a teacher is one of those kind can you slow, can you slowly put it oh um, sorry sir um it is uh, you know a slide show so it goes fast sir uh, one yeah, one second sir. one second one second I will I will do it without uh, slide show sir yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, that is better man without slide show aki avaga fast ag hogala yes sir so to to repeat it because of the uh, some technical issue every individual has in him a living spirit that never ceases to illuminate and in that reaches immortality a teacher is one of those kind and some great teachers work indelible footprints with their colossal strides in different spheres and uh, education professor of uh, pediatrics at kmc hubli 1960 to 1971 
principal of JN Medical College, Belgaum, 1971-74, and education. He was a wonderful person with, uh, uh, with a good aspect in educating children and especially medical students in the proper way. And he, he was foundation of uh, JNMC Scientific Society in 1971, a very wonderful administrator. And Vice Chancellor of Karnataka University, Darwad, 1984-87. Vice Chancellor of Karnataka University, Darwad, in the same period was as a college stated. Some pictures can be seen, which can be played later. So some pictures of uh, annual uh, uh, conference and uh, other chapters we're getting illustrated uh, think is also seen in the pictures. And uh, we can see some of his nostalgic pictures where, where he is playing cricket. So that shows how interested he was in different walks of life. And uh, a legend during his lifetime. Madam, you keep uh, uh, showing the slide show, madam. It is not shared at all. It madam, is not shared. Slide show. Let Shantra continue. You slow, show the slides. Okay. Devotion has not duty. been shown. Devotion to duty is not a sacrifice. It is a justification for your existence in this world. These are some of the few words about a great legend, Dr. H.G. Desai, whom pediatricians of Karnataka and the country can never forget his contribution to the uh, uh, medical field in pediatrics is something if you inquire with some of the people of those times, they will be able to tell you the stories, multiple stories of him. He is a great legend. I think we should be ever grateful to him for bringing so many pediatricians into this state. So with this, I request uh, Dr. Jagdish Sinapa to introduce Dr. Jagdish Sinapa. Dr. Ramitha, please click on share screen on Zoom. Come back on Zoom. Your screen is not shared. Akshita, do you have slides? Just to say, stop to. Um, yeah, you can share it. If you, if you permit me, I will share the slides. Yeah, please, please, please. please. Yes, Dr. Shantaraj, you can go ahead. Shantaraj, yeah. you can go ahead with this. Some of the uh, 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 department, former Vice Chancellor of Karnataka University, Darwad, former principal, JN Medical College, Belgaum. <coughs> Primary education was at the VDSCC School, Gadar, graduated from the Grant Medical College, Mumbai, MBBS in 1950, MD General Medicine in 1953 and uh, DCH in 1954, served as a medical registrar, Grant Medical College, Mumbai, assistant professor, Osmania Medical College, Hyderabad, professor and head department of pediatrics, Karnataka Medical College, Hubli, 1960-71, principal, professor and medical medicine in JN Medical, JN Medical College, Belgaum, 71-84, a meritorious student and uh, Dr. Desai sir, as a great teacher, established an academically strong and active department of pediatrics at the KMC Hubli as the distinction of starting the first MD course in pediatrics in Karnataka at KMC Hubli in 65. He inculcated in the students high values like discipline, hard work, sincerity, and commitment. His students are successful doctors all over the country and overseas. His students are privileged to hold distinguished and reputed positions. These are some of the honors he has received, awarded WHO fellowship in USA and Canada for medical education. First medical teacher in Karnataka to be uh, to become the vice chancellor. <coughs> Jain Medical College General Library was named after Dr. Desai sir in the presence of Honorable Health Minister Gulam Nabi Azad. Some of the felicitations, felicitation by Bangalore Hospital, by API Karnataka chapter for his contribution to medical education in 1995, felicitation by Dr. H. Parameshwar, Lakeside Hospital, Bangalore. Institute, institution of Oration Lecture at the State IAP Conference. 
a legend during his lifetime. I am extremely sorry for the issues, internet problems. But, but Ramita Pai, yes, this Over to Dr. Latesh, sir, to introduce yes, the orator. Good morning, madam. It gives uh, me an immense pleasure to introduce today's orator, Dr. Jagdish Chinatwa. A sincere and committed pediatrician, sir, is delivering this oration with his vast experience in the field of pediatrics. He is a committed pediatrician, the past president of IAP Bangalore. He is president of IAP ID chapter. He has been a chief election officer of Central IAP. He has served in many positions, taking huge responsibilities for the welfare of IAP and growing the mother body IAP to the greater heights. Presently, Dr. Jagdish Chinapa is HOD in Manipal College and he serves various fields of pediatrics with intense communication to academics. His commitment is unquestionable, he is sincere and he strikes spoken. It is very difficult to introduce a magnanimous figure like Dr. Jagdish Chinnaswa. Mm -hmm. We all have huge respects and he deserves all the respects to conduct an oration. Uh, it takes a long time to introduce himself. Dr. Jagdish Chinnaswa, I would hand over to Dr. Jagdish Chinnaswa for a very expected oration. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Natesh, for those wonderful words. At the outset, my respects to Professor Dr. S.G. Desai. Um, I'm, uh, I would have been honored if he could attend this oration, but uh, I suppose that due to uh, physical problems, he may not be able to. However, I'm very grateful for his family, Dr. Manth Shetty and I, Dr. Arun Desai, if they are here. and the whole family of pediatrics starting from the central IAP, Dr. Bakul Parekh, Dr. Basavaraj and all others, Dr. Piyush Gupta. Our state IAP led by Dr. Shantaraj, the fantastic leader, Dr. Natesh and all others. Uh, I thank all of you for giving me the opportunity for presenting um, a topic which is slightly offbeat, but maybe at the end of the lecture, it may make some sense to some of us. I also thank uh, Dr. Amita Pai and Dr. Rajendra Salgare for uh, uh, you know, coordinating this entire event and uh, helping me out with many of the um, uh, you know, um, uh, technical issues and uh, organizational issues. So let's start with the story. I mean, I always like to start a oration with a story. This is 40 years back. We used to have a congregation every month at my residence in Mumbai. This congregation was a group of many people with different in different specialities. I was a medical student wanting to pursue a career in pediatrics. And the agenda of this congregation was what's new in the world and what each of those 15 people had done interesting in the past month. One of those members was a bespectacled jovial professor who one could relate to immediately. He was a professor of neurosurgery at the King Edward Medical Hospital in Mumbai, Dr. Sunil Pandya. He has been a mentor and a leading light in my life for many years. So what he did was, when I was conversing with him, it was an absolute bliss. He gave me a copy of Sir William Osler's Equanimitas. This is the book which I have had with me from all those days onwards. It has revolutionized some of my thinking and my attitude to the profession. Before I start my talk, I want to disclaim that the life, works and philosophy of Sir William Osler are far too vast. I will be presenting only a viewpoint of his philosophy. I have refrained from quoting the popular aphorisms and medical discoveries, which I'm sure everybody is familiar with. And they are quoting, they are quoted very often in most conferences. 
So I'm not going to go into the superficial parts of things which are very well known. I'm going to deep into look at some of his philosophical issues, which again is only a viewpoint. So I'm going to break this into three chapters. Chapter one was who is Sir, who was Sir William Osler? What was his life like? Chapter two, what were his principles and whether they are relevant today? And chapter three, Osler and pediatrics. What was the influence that he had on pediatrics? Let's start with Sir William Osler. He has been described as the greatest physician of all time. The father of modern medicine. This happens very often when people pass away and you know there, there are many people who give fantastic eulogies saying that this is it. Well, in 1916, uh, 2016, that is four years back, he was voted as the most influential physician in history. Now, why is that? Why was he voted as the most phys influential physician? There are so many physicians who have made fantastic discoveries, who have done great things. He never discovered anything which was fantastic. He never had anything that was great. But what made him influential? Well, we'll look at some of the qualities that made him really influential. A stamp was released many years after he was gone. That also says that he is in the memory of people. He was born in Bondhead, Ontario in Canada, belonging to a family of preachers. And this was on July 12th, 1849. This date is important to note because all over the world, this day is celebrated as Sir William Osler's day. As a child, he was mischievous. He rebelled. He was good at athletics. And he was arrested for serious pranks which continue to adult life. He was a prankster. He used to make fun of people. I'll just go through one of his adult pranks. You might finding, find it amusing in the morning. On one occasion, he told his wife, that the weekend guest was hard of hearing and he told the guest the same thing about his wife. So over the weekend both are shouting at each other and Sir Osler was sitting and enjoying the fun. So this is the kind of pranks he used to play. He also had, he had created a pseudonym called Egerton Davis where he used to write nonsense articles. And some of those articles were so bizarre that they are yet to be made public. They are still lying in the vault of the uh, Osler library in Megill and none of them are made public at all. Then he went to Trinity College to become a clergyman. Well, that was the father was a clergyman. So he also thought that he would become a clergyman. So he went there. What happened then? Well, we all have Eureka moments in our lives. There are times in our lives, a moment in your life and everything changes. What happened to him was that he met two people, Reverend William Johnson and Dr. James Bowell. They got him interested in natural history, which later influenced him a lot of his thinking because they introduced him to the microscope. They went around to different parts of the country trying to pick out stuff and look at it under the microscope. So he got interested in biology, in natural history. And this was the turning point. This motivated him to take up medicine. So he joined the Toronto School of Medicine. Well, let's look back in all our lives. There are turning points when we really choose to do medicine and why. Well, it could be a role model, it could be family pressure, it could be whatever. But there is there is a Eureka moment that you need that is there, which switches on that, key, that keenness to do medicine. So he goes to Toronto and from Toronto he moves because the caseload is not too much. So he goes to McGill at Montreal. And there he meets his second major uh, father figure and that is Dr. Robert Palmer. Robert Palmer was a man with a stern sense of duty and a mental freshness of youth. And they had great conversations and learning on as far as medicine was concerned. We all know the value of a good teacher like Dr. S.G. Desai, where you can, where you need to get that freshness is there, that motivation is there, and there is a sense of duty to deliver to our patients. Then he traveled to Europe. He went to German-speaking countries, went to British Isles, discovered platelets, goes to Berlin, studies under famous Verkow, which all of us have heard about. He goes to Vienna, studies under Karl Wald Rokitansky and learns a lot about microbiology and anesthesia. These were things which were unheard of in, in those days. So he learns new things going abroad. Then he returns to Montreal. He wants to become an ophthalmologist, but fate feels otherwise. There's an opening in McGill. He joins McGill. He becomes a teacher and gets fascinated because of his travels to autopsy, trying to find out what is the cause of the disease. And this is something which was really, um, you know, uh, novel, which was which nobody had done to the extent that which Sir William Osler had done. So he does, he joins the dead house in Montreal. He does autopsies with no gloves, no mask. 
he performs over 1000 autopsies 1000 autopsies a huge number and says that the only way to get correlation with your clinical diagnosis is a pathological correlation during the course of course he contracted cutaneous tuberculosis from which he suffered for many years and you can see the meticulous notes handwritten notes no computer no dictation no nothing writ handwritten notes and you can see their aortic valve disease and very meticulously written notes of thousand autopsies so you can see the manner in which this man was doing his work and you can see the large number of people who came to observe those autopsies to see what was going on now this was something very new then he said okay i have used microscope in my biology class which i have done many years back can i use it in clinical medicine and one of the features of creativity in any human being is building connections between something you have learned and something that is new and so he builds the he brings the microscope into the clinical medicine now this is a major step so then in 1870 this time he was just about 21 years old he was earning very little despite teaching at the montreal hospital so what did he do what does anybody do when you are earning very little you try to find another job so what it does he do he volunteers to go and take care of smallpox patients in the smallpox ward so he becomes what is called as a smallpox doctor and as you know it was the worst disease of its time his teacher dr bowell died of the disease Osler contracted smallpox but luckily he escaped with only about 17 or 18 lesions another point about smallpox is once you're working there nobody wants to come and visit you because they say that you might spread the disease when he earned money he thought that he's going to use it for livelihood but then what does he do he spends all the money he earns to buy microscopes for his students so that they also are motivated to try and understand the disease then at the montreal general hospital the traditional pattern of teaching in those days if you have seen uh, munnava mbbs was the amphitheater teaching and in this amphitheater teaching there used to be the patient the professor standing there and all of them sitting around as you can see in those um, you know on those tables when i joined medical college and grant medical college which is the same college with dr desai went we also had an amphitheater for an anatomy class and i can still remember a professor of anatomy teaching from the amphitheater uh, demonstration tickets were sold for this class and smoking was allowed so it was not a real serious kind of a class which was there then sir william osler attends for the first time an international medical congress in 1881 he was 32 years old at that time and who are the attendees jean marie charcot thomas huxley joseph lister sir james paget louis pasteur rudolf volkov and robert Koch. as you can see the galaxy of people who made the major discoveries in medicine were there in that congress in between 78 and 1983 he passes the exam of the royal college of physicians in england and is elected a fellow in 1883 in 1984 he moves from canada to the us he was in montreal all these years and he moves to university of pennsylvania because he thinks that the clinical material are more his clinical skills are exemplary students adore his teaching he introduces autopsy and microscopy to all the students and keeps them fascinated moves from this amphitheater teaching to bedside teaching and this if you ask me was one of the major 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 uh, revolutions in medicine that it was no more the lectures and classrooms but the classes that were taken at the bedside which made a difference he also went through the meticulousness of medical examination inspection palpation auscultation and contemplation contemplation was his major fault because he always thought he thought through what was going on in the patient and whether it correlated with an autopsy as you can see percussion was not here but I don't know why it is not here but it was not mentioned in his archives so he changed the way medicine looked and taught to medical students then he wrote a very very famous book of which i got a copy when i was a young student this is a landmark book it is a valedictory address to the university of pennsylvania to the students it had two elements which he said that may or mar your life one is imperturbability and second is equanimity remaining calm but not indifferent and no eventuality should disturb your mental equilibrium there was a lot of controversy subsequently about what he meant whether it should be indifferent but it's not indifference it's remaining calm you cannot get flustered your emotions your amygdala can't take over 
So that's what he meant by equanimitas. And three values which he mentioned in this was every physician should have is values of the heart. That is you connect. Humanism for Sir William Mosler was the main thing. You looked at the patient as a human being. You looked at the student as a human being. You looked at your colleagues as a human being. So values of the heart were extremely important. Values of the head, clarity of thinking, knowledge was another very important thing. And hand, the values which are very important as far as the hand is concerned, is the skills that you learn, the skills of picking up things. So I think these are the three things that he mentioned or repeatedly in his essays that we need to have all three values to be successful in practice. In 1889, he moves to John Hopkins in Baltimore as the chair of medicine. And he was called here with a very brief interview. Uh, Dr. Billings, who was his chief at that time, moved, asked him to move to Baltimore. The opening of the medical school is delayed because there is no money. There's the money which they had uh, had was spent all spent in um, building up the hospital. There was no money for the medical school. So what happens? So William Mosler, three things happened to him. What are those three things? The first thing he writes is monumental textbook. This was the textbook which he wrote single-handedly, sat down, poured over and wrote down the principles and practice of medicine, which was a phenomenal textbook which made him very famous and which set the standards of care of not only the United States of America but the world over. And that was what was amazing about this man. The next thing he wanted to marry. He was already pretty old by then. He was close to 40, 40 above 40. He goes to uh, Lady Grace Javier and proposes to her. And she's a very smart lady. And what she says is, you're writing your textbook. So please finish your textbook and come back when it is done. I can't marry you till you finish your textbook. So he goes back and he says, okay, starts writing his textbook. The third important thing is, because there's no money, a group of ladies plan to raise the money. But their condition for raising the money is that women should have equal opportunity of becoming doctors and pursuing their careers like men. And Osler supported this viewpoint against many other colleagues who are not in favor of this. And remember, Johns Hopkins was the first university that gave in the United States of America that gave equal opportunity to women to practice medicine the way men practice medicine. And that, I think, was a landmark decision from uh, that university, from that college. Then he finishes writing his book, goes to Grace, and the child comes out again. He says, here is the book. He puts the book in front of her and says, now what are you going to do about the man? And she agrees to marry him. And then he says, one of the most important lessons to be gathered is marry the right woman. And I think this is another thing which all of us uh, should look at. At John Hopkins, it happens to be one of the best teaching and clinical center in the world. You can see Franklin Payne Mall, who was a famous anatomist. John Jacob Abel was a pharmacologist. And Dr. Um, uh, William Osler was the man who brought him up and made him look at pharmacology and looked at things like hormones, etc. William Welch, everybody knows, was the famous pathologist. Howard Kelly, the gynecologist. And William Halstead was a very famous surgeon. So you can see the stars and it was the best teaching and clinical center in the world primarily because of the Sangha or the group of people who were at John Hopkins. He establishes radical changes at John Hopkins. Bedside clinics were already established. He establishes a system of clinical clerkship and a hierarchical residency system which all of us are assume it now. Everyone goes to medical college with all this. But it was new at that time. It was not the way things were done. In his house was what is called as an open house. Students could access his huge library of over 7,500 books. And the keys to the house was with the student. They could come in any time, go any time, use his library. He was passionate about students. And he had given the keys to them. Tell them, please, whenever you want, you can come in and work it out. December 1895, he becomes a papa at the age of 46. His son, Revere, adored his son. He just loved his son. His son had no inclination of being a doctor. He wanted to become an angler and an outdoor man. But Osler enjoyed that and loved him and supported him in whatever he wanted to do. In 1905, he was called to, to Oxford. There he takes the professorship at, of medicine at the University of Oxford becomes very famous because he is a he's an outstanding clinician outstanding teacher 
and again his house in oxford was called open arms open to anybody students scientists sometimes he would say i'm coming for tea to his wife and there would be 100 people landing up for tea at his house so he was a very open man there there he wrote the next book called the textbook of modern medicine where he had international collaboration he realized the value of getting thoughts from everywhere and putting it into a textbook in 1911 the king george v made him the baronet and that was his uh, emblem as you can see equinomitas at the bottom and the significance of this itself will take two hours lecture but he was made a baronet then what was otto osler's reaction to this osler's reaction again was the naughty child coming out and he says it's wonderful how a bad boy can fool everybody till he gets to work so i mean he you can see the the man was took everything with a pinch of humor he missed the ceremony the ceremony was a grand ceremony but he missed it because he was at the bed side of a sick friend then 1914 the first world war breaks out and this disturbs him tremendously because he says science should be used for the benefit of human being not for the destruction of human being and because of advances in science so many people are losing their lives in 1917 he is disillusioned the scientific achievement has a dark side his son is killed in the war the only saving grace was his good friend dr harvey cushing was at the son's bedside he was he was no doubt disturbed by the death of his only son but he worked through his grief with his best friends with his books and he he was always used to go back and say that yes success and tragedy should be taken in the same kind of equanimity that he had in his mind in 1919 in the spanish flu epidemic which all of us are aware of because of various lectures he took he died on the 19th december 1919 of complications of pneumonia he had hemorrhage in his uh, chest wall and he died of pneumonia at the age of 70 years this is a brief sir william mosler for you in a capsule now let's go to the chapter 2 what were his principles are they relevant today and 3 osler and pediatrics i will talk about the 10 universal principles of sir william mosler i am very grateful to my good friend dr charles bryan who allowed me to use this material the first one is avoid premature specialization he considered himself either a specialized generalist or a generalized specialist what is very important is to understand human beings understand the, the depth of diseases that can be there in all organs and then you can become a specialist but if you do not have that kind of a broad view of medicine and the broad view of people in general you are unlikely to become a good specialist and this is a this i think is true in today's world i am sure all of us agree that we have to go through the rigors of learning clinical medicine in all its entirety and then specialize in small fields you cannot become a, a neonatologist of repute without knowing general pediatrics you need to understand how this child is going to grow how this child is going to blossom for you to understand the very nuances of the speciality and i think that's very important the second is maintain a broad world view Osler urged physicians to transcend place and ethnic groups. He encouraged young physicians to travel, to study men, their habits, character, mode of life, behavior, under varied conditions, their vices, virtues, and peculiarities. The whole breadth of human beings and the whole breadth of childhood is so fascinating that we must get a broad world view. What is pediatrics in Africa is very different from what is it, it is in Middle East. It's what's very different in within India itself. what is it's very different from what it is in northeast compared to rajasthan compared to gujarat compared to karnataka so travel to look at what are the various things and one way of traveling is of course going to conferences and looking at different people which i'll come to a little later so broad world view and i think i would urge youngsters to travel when they are young that's a time to go to different places of course the pandemic has put a put a break on it but that doesn't matter the third important thing is appreciate history look back when he wrote in 1892 about his textbook <laughs> textbook yeah. um there was a brief history of typhoid fever but that was not very clear whether it was typhoid or typhus yeah. and therefore it needs to go back to uh, 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 dr sumita you need to uh, mute please um, so a great stumbling blocks to the area of specific infections 
the next thing is work and i think this is very very important for uh, this thing so i'm sorry uh, work osler succeeded at this task by concentrating his energies in day type tight compartments it's a metaphor drawn from the watertight compartments of the great ocean liners of his era and which he meant blocking out the past and the future to focus on the present he called work the master word of medicine and i'm sure all of us understand that work 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 is the ultimate master word he might have added that he owed his success in no small measure to his willingness to assume tasks which no others would do like for example doing 1000 um, uh, uh, autopsies he contributed to 1200 articles in medical literature his contributions to literature of infectious diseases is enough to write a full textbook regular study maintain a high energy level so you must be devoted must have an absorbing passion and an energy to push things and i think this is very 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 important for students today they need to work hard there are so many distractions which go on but at the end of the day it's working hard that's going to deliver results keep a skeptical attitude and what is what does this mean be sober and distrustful because ultimately none of us know what is the real truth he says very clearly no human being is considered to know the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth this is only lawyers the best of men must be content with fragments and partial glimpses never the full fruition so all of us are in the quest of knowing what is really true and the core of this skepticism was intellectual honesty and when he returned after 25 years to montreal from where he started he said very clearly i have learned to be a better student and to be ready to say to my fellow students i do not know and i think this is another quality that all of us must know the sixth quality which he mentioned was investigate the best premise is to find out what are the the things that are going wrong and investigate it just an example look at the causes of protracted fever which he said with physical science and he suggested consider tuberculosis endocarditis complicated uti hodgkins occult tumors especially deep seated sarcomas and tumors can anybody give anything more than this in current times wonderful way of looking at investigating the causes and writing it down and putting it and therefore because of this investigative attitude he became one of the most reputed and consummate consultant and you can look at the oscillate tradition of looking at pathophysical physical criteria of, of disease so i think we are all working on the oscillarian philosophy the other thing which he mentioned was this number 7 principle was respond to societal concerns he responded to typhoid typhoid is endemic like in india today he says there are three things that are important members of the profession preach cleanliness cleanliness and cleanliness give loyal and willing support to state health officials and to guard every case of typhoid fever as a possible source of further attention corona has told us the same thing cleanliness wear your mask have wash your hands sanitize your hands keep distance support state health officials and isolate when they have infection so what is different it's the same thing so the principles are the same so he outlined a program for preventing typhoid fever through in troops with the same kind of thing and studied the efficacy of a vaccine typhoid vaccine what are we doing today the same thing so i think what is really important is that he thought many many years advance of himself he also says you need to be political when necessary and he says it's not a question of controversy not an argument but you need to push it through we are sick to death of mayors and first branches and second branches the hierarchy of people who are uh, delivering healthcare in heaven's name what have they done for us in the past i can tell you what they have done for us in the last 13 years is that they have paved two or three streets okay give me a couple of good men and who can run this city as a business corporation he says it would not take us a year then mr mayor not a year to get a start on the sewage system and an infectious disease hospital and everything else that the public welfare demands can there be anything more futuristic than this 
we live in squalor swachh bharat or otherwise and ultimately what he has said at that time holds to even today next important thing which i think all youngsters should know is support organizations like we support the indian academy of pediatrics osla participated at various times in various organizations 110 organizations and he was regularly present in all their meetings whether it was local regional or national meetings and i'm sure many of the uh, members who are here today would be doing the same thing he told physicians you cannot afford to stand aloof from your professional colleagues in any place join their associations mingle in their meetings give the best of your talents gathering here scattering there but everywhere showing that you are at all times faithful students as willing to teach as to be taught the passports of your fellowship should be the honesty of purpose and a devotion to the highest interests of our profession and these you will find widely diffused sometimes apparent only when you get beneath the crust of a rough exterior how many of us know this we have had rough teachers but underneath they are great so moreover a man misses a good part of his education who does not get knocked about by a bit of his colleagues in discussions and criticisms so get criticized it's very important that's the time that's where you will learn where your mistakes are he always said be an idealist you are in this business you are in this pediatrics you are in this medical profession as a calling which extracts from you at every turn self sacrifice devotion love tenderness of your fellow men once you get down to to it as a pure business level your influence is gone and the true light of your life is dim you must work in the missionary spirit with the breath of charity that raises you above the dead level of a business so i think don't treat this calling as a business so in summary if you look at the principles that he went through avoid premature specialization maintain a broad world view appreciate history work keep a skeptical attitude investigate respond to societal concerns be political when necessary support organizations and be an idealist so i think these are some of the important things that are uh, uh, which youngsters which students and all of us we are still students of course where we need to keep it in mind now how did osler synthesize all these principles in his personal life he did it by these two loops the clinic the laboratory the library and the autopsy room were all linked so that there is a holistic view of what's going on with the patient and the disease he taught it to students by bedside learning and teaching by contemplation by confirmation and by expansion of knowledge it's very important at times to know what you do not know and therefore you need to know so this is very important so as i said here and what did he do it in he did it in internal medicine in obstetrics gynecology pediatrics surgery pathology pharmacology infectious disease preventive and social medicine advocacy research medical education ethics acupuncture dermatology family physician gastroenterology genetist veterinarian historian humanities can you see the breadth of what this man has done and the depth of what this man has done amazing and he did it in one place no he did it across three continents three countries canada us and united kingdom now let's go to the third part osler and pediatrics what influence did osler have on pediatrics pediatrics as you will recollect didn't exist many years back dr sg desai was probably one of the first few who passed out from the institute where pediatrics started in india from the grant medical college um, and that started somewhere in the 1928 30 period of time so he was probably um, 10 or 12 years into the uh, dch part program during osler's time there was nothing like pediatrics It didn't exist so they were basically what he did was he was keenly interested in pediatrics he wrote 100 articles about children and their diseases in fact when he went to john hopkins he worked on cerebral palsies and chorea he went to a hospital and looked at um, you know the infirmary of nervous diseases and many chapters in his textbooks were pediatric topics typhoid um, diphtheria um, uh, smallpox so many topics were written with children in focus he was one of the founding members of the american pediatric society he became the second president and his address as the second president was something fantastic where he talks about how in those days pediatrics was a specialty of adult medicine he was a close friend of abraham jacobi the father of american pediatrics and he was an early advocate for children's hospital he has motivated people to start 
children's hospitals in Canada in, in the United States, etc. And he encouraged specialization in the subject of pediatrics. In practice, children constituted about 10% of his practice. Just imagine on a single day, he consulted both for the prince and the son of the prime minister of England. So he was so much sought after. And a child is not a little adult was one of his favorite quotes, which still exists today. So we have seen um, briefly Sir William Osler's life and philosophy. Where did this inspiration come from? And where do we go from here? Well, his inspiration was a poem from Kalidasa, a Sanskrit poem. And I will just play this for you. Continued improvement as a physician. After his address was printed, Osler requested all future printings include a poem from the Sanskrit that embodied his own philosophy, the salutation of the dawn. Listen to the exhortation of the dawn. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. In its brief course lie all the varieties and realities of your existence. The bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. For yesterday is but a dream, and tomorrow is only a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a dream of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. Such is the salutation of the dawn. So what is its relevance today? We have Oslo societies across the world. Many countries have Oslo societies. We celebrate Oslo Day at Manipal on his birthday. And this is an encyclopedia released recently by Charles Bryan. Uh, it's a huge encyclopedia. The authors are three of us, Dr. Sunil Pandya, Dr. Sanjay Pai who are mentors and guideposts for my journey. And I have written a small piece in this encyclopedia on the role of uh, Sir William Osler in pediatrics. So Osler is an enigma. Osler is somebody that we need to look at. Now I want the audience to look at this picture carefully. For a minute or so just Take in this whole picture within you and you will realize after you look into this picture that there is a part of Osler in all of us. Every one of us has something going on which we can identify with Osler and that was his beauty because everybody could identify something in Osler which is within us. So I thank you for this opportunity to present this oration. My thanks to my teachers, mentors and gurus, of which there are many. My family, parents, tolerant wife and children, numerous demanding relatives, my classmates, my colleagues, the family of IAP, national, state and city. Institutions which have nurtured me for many years, starting from Sita Bhatija Nursing Home to Pilamna's Hospital to Malike to Bangalore Children's Hospital to Apollo, Malia to Manipal. So many friends, patients without whom we would do be nothing. And last but not the least, my critics and anybody else I missed out. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Jagdish Shinappa. We were in a different world. We were taken to a different world. And we, are, we take some time to come out of that. We were in a dreamy world. Thank you, sir. But for you, nobody can do a better operation on such a subject. Thank you very much, sir. IAP is ever grateful to you. IAP Karnataka for giving such a wonderful talk. I thank you. I thank you very much, sir. Hello, on behalf of myself and on behalf of Dr. Natesh, I thank you, sir. I have some thank internet connection issue. I request Dr. Salagiri to continue. As this is a progression lecture, no questions are allowed. I thank 
Jagdish Sinapa for wonderful ovation on Dr. S. D. Desai sir. Jagdish Sinapa sir is one of the few leading speakers of the country and is a great jewel of Karnataka IIT academics. Karnataka IIT has honored itself by awarding Jagdish Sinapa sir by awarding the great Dr. S. D. Desai ovation sir award. Dr. Jagdish Sinapa has elegantly described the life history and struggle of Sir William Osler and how a great scientist, researcher, is made and makes it clear that stars are not born overnight. He has described well the 10 universal principles of the medical students to become a good doctor. It is need of the younger generation to follow and emulate at least few of the principles of the Osler to follow to become a good doctor. <coughs> a famous quote, still valid, child is not a small adult, is regularly used in medical colleges to describe how the child conditions are different from the adult. Dr. Desai sir is a great living legend and founder and lost bearer of the child health in Karnataka and India. I thank our president, Dr. Shantara, secretary, Dr. Matesh, and Mansetti Madam for chairing this session. I request Dr. Mansetti Madam to share a few words about the great soul, the father figure, of not only to the madam as well as to the family, but all the pediatrics of the country and the of the pediatrics. Madam, thank you very much for to be with us on this great day. So, we are extremely grateful to you, Madam. So, kindly speak a few words about your father. So, it is, I am at a loss of words actually today uh, because it's, uh, it is really uh, an emotional moment for me to be here, uh, but also a privilege and an honor by. Uh, Carpedicon, I am uh, 2020, which I am indebted to. Dr. Jagdish Chinnappa, I think you have excellent talk, sir, and the principles that you told. I have seen it in my father. As you said, there is an Osla in everybody, and I have seen it right uh, from my childhood till today. Uh, he is a living person of... Uh, the good values that he has taught us is uh, still imprinted, not only uh, in, I, I mean, the Department of Pediatrics in Hubli, or you ask in the, in our Jain Medical College, most of the students still remember his, the good values that he has taught, and we still follow whatever uh, footprints and foundation he has laid in this prestigious college. And also as a vice chancellor in Karnataka University. Uh, those were the strong people that we had. Those were the model teachers that we had during those days. But as a daughter, what strikes me most about him is his need for passion for teaching and passion for reading and passion for his patients. Rich or poor, they all were treated equally. So I, I, that's why I think when the library had to be named after him, there was no second thought. Everybody said, yes, it has to be named after him because every evening he used to spend his time in the library. And that was transferred to the patient. So just because Sir spoke about Osla, I would like to say this was actually apt and he taught us about this. To study the phenomenon of disease without books is to sail an uncharted sea. While to study books without patience is not going to sail at all. This is what Osla said and he believed in this and taught us all about it. So Sir, it was a wonderful talk. And I will transfer this. I will definitely tell my father about this because uh, he would have loved to listen to you only because of his hearing problem. He is not here with us. Even today, he practices medicine. He goes to the clinic and practices medicine. And even today, he keeps himself abreast with the knowledge. So that, that uh, it's a great honor to, uh, by you, sir, by giving this talk to him. And I'm really privileged and I will definitely say that you gave a very good befitting talk to his oration. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. 
Not to Salagiri. Can you continue? I once again thank Jagmeet Sinapa sir, Chairperson Dr. Shantaraj, Secretary Dr. Natesh, and organizing committee and all office leaders of the esteemed uh, office leaders of the current IIT and all the esteemed delegates. I request the organizing committee to continue for the session. Uh, Dr. Jagmeet sir, this is not a this is a virtual conference. We are not able to be there with you to felicitate you. I humbly request your family to felicitate you. Can you can we have the pleasure uh, <laughs> of seeing you with our uh, uh, felicitation through your family? Right. Definitely, sir. This is a great moment for us. <laughs> You can put the shawl and leave it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been given instructions. Let <laughs> 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 I've been given instructions by Dr. Gyan. Gyan Murthy. Gyan Murthy. Thank you very much. Step to put cap on his head, Dr. Arana. We are indebted to you, sir. Namaste, sir. <laughs> Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Aruna, please come next to her. Dr. Aruna? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Next to him. Yeah, that's lovely. I'm happy to see you. This down, huh? excellent. Great. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Maharaja. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you for thank you, thank, thank, you, thank you, you for sending the topi matching address. Any, <laughs> 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 hey, I put a topi forty years back. Aruna, you know. at, at, at least at the last you put a topi on him. No, actually, forty years back. <laughs> forty years back only she did that one. <laughs> At Grand Medical College only. Call it thing, sir. Yeah. Thank you. All. Thank you all. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you, thank you sir. Dr. sir, thank you very much for attending. So, this. thank you, Jaggi sir. It is an indeed an excellent, thought-provoking talk. It is an inspiration to the lot of youngsters like us. So, really, lot of carryover messages. Arun, madam, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Manchetti, madam. Thank you, madam. It's a great opportunity for any son or a daughter to attend the father's oration. We are very lucky to have this. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Madam, I insisted Santraj. I insisted Santraj to make sure Manchati Madam is there. Yes. She has to witness this. Yes. <laughs> so insisted and it's really sure an honor, sir. Excellent, excellent idea, sir. Very good. I know it's an honor for me. Madam, my namaskar is to sir. Please. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank indeed, you, madam. Indeed, we all have been honored. Yeah. Your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jagu Dada. Yay! Yeah.